Oh my god! All right, so there's not that much going on today. I've got a 5.3 on a stand, and I've got a cam in springs. So I think we should finally get started on that. This is, of course, for the uh, first gen RX-7 I have. This one. Now this is gonna be pretty similar, like along the same lines as the sloppy don't BS me build, but I'm gonna do a few things different just to kind of put my own spin on it. The first thing is I went with a Texas Speed Cam. Now I ordered this cam through Justin Baker, Dr. Differential and Speed Shop. He is a Texas Speed dealer. I think he's also a Circle D dealer. So if you guys need anything Circle D or Texas Speed, hit him up. Uh, but he's been using this cam for a few years now. Now I didn't know this at the time because Texas Speed offers like two versions of the same cam. One is just like an off the shelf cam that just lists the specs and the other one's the actual titled one. But this is the same cam that Kalidas has in Ruby. This is the dumpster fire cam. I didn't know that at the time, but I thought it was pretty funny. So needless to say, there's a lot of information just from Cletus and from Justin. They both use the cam with great success. Hey, Duke. Hi, Puff. Hi. Hi. You're a little damp. Hi. So the specs on the cam are 224, 228, 600, 600 lift, and a 114 lobe separation angle. Obviously, it has worked very well for pretty much everyone who's used it. So, I'll find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> and then the go-to for the sloppy springs are the 1218, but since this is a 600 lift, I went with the 1219. These are beehive springs. And as a little bonus, I did not know until a few months ago that Pack is actually made in Michigan. Yep, Pack Racing Springs, Southfield, Michigan. Here is the engine. This is just a 5.3. It is a Gen 3 5.3, so no idea how many miles are on it. It does have the LS9 head gaskets. That's pretty much the only thing I've done to it. And then this BBK intake I just picked up from the neighbor across the street like last fall, something like that. But aside from the Cayman Springs, I'm not gonna touch the engine at all. I'm not gonna port the heads or anything like that. To get the RX-7 into the tens, because it's gonna be such a light car, should be around 2,900 with me in it. To get it into the tens, I shouldn't need a whole lot of horsepower. And I'm thinking, like at the most 600 wheel and that'll probably put me in the nines and get thrown out of the track immediately i think if i stayed like mid tens they won't get too upset at me um i might be able to get a couple runs before they are like hey you you need some shit <laughs> but the first thing we got to do is dig this engine out because it has been cast aside back here for way too long so i'm gonna get that dug out and we'll start uh tearing it apart all right, engine's all dug out, we're ready to go. Got the table cleared off so we can work there a little bit. Uh, this intake is just sitting on it. The water pump still needs to be replaced because this is the leaking one off my dad's truck because I gave him the stock one off of this. Because I'm gonna have to either run a different water pump, like a LS3, I think it is, I don't remember. Um, or like an F body pump with spacers where I might be able to get away with modifying this one. Cause like the main thing is this. So I think I could probably just slash cut that and fucking get it coming pretty much straight out. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see when we get there. So the plan is obviously change the cam and springs. I should probably gap the rings. Uh, I'm not gonna be at enough of a power level for it to be a serious concern, but I should do it just to be safe. I know that there are a lot, a lot of people making like 650, 700 on stock ring gaps, but it's one of those things I should do it just to be safe. That way there's no real reason this thing should fail. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how I feel when I get there. But I am gonna pull the heads off to uh, at least look at things because I haven't looked in these cylinders in a while. So let's just start pulling it apart and see what we find. So like I said, this is just sitting on there.
Jesus, there is a lot of shit in here. What the fuck? What the hell? That is crazy. I should get new head gaskets, even though these ones are technically brand new. They're like, they've been in this for, what, a year and a half or so? If you were gonna do this right, you should get new head gaskets, even though these have never been run. They are old. I think I'll pull them off and copper spray them just to try and be safe. I'm definitely gonna have to clean all of this shit up though. That is bizarre. All right, so I was about to just say screw it. I'm gonna pull it apart, dingle ball hole in the cylinders and all that, but, but I said just for shits and giggles, I'll spray some breakaway, basically just anything like WD-40, PB Blast or whatever. I'll spray some of that in the cylinders and roll it over a few times and it actually knocked down, I don't know how well you guys can see it. I mean, it cleaned them up really well. They're still not perfect. I'm not trying to trick you guys on, to, on anything like that. Like you can see a little, well, it's not even like a ring ridge. I don't, it's just like a witness mark. But they're, they should be dingle ball honed. If you're gonna do it right, or like try to really care about it, just pull them apart and hone it. But I think for what we're doing here, let's just slap the cam and springs in it, call it good. I do think I'm gonna get new head gaskets and new head bolts. I don't know, let me at least get the, uh, let me at least get the cam and springs on and then we'll, we'll see how I feel after that. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is the part that's gonna kind of decide whether or not this engine is actually usable. If there's a lobe gone or or something's all fuckered with it. All right, here we go. There we go. There's some shit right there on these two, but everything, everything seems okay. I think it's got just like a lot of trash from, uh, just from sitting. So yeah, fuck it. Forget about it, I guess. Let's do one of those ultimate no-nos and see if we can look down here. Can't really get a good look at the surface of them, but you know what, that might be for the best. <laughs> I'm gonna find some good clean oil, because I know we've got some here. If not, I'll just go run and get some, and then start throwing the new cam in, and then get the new springs on the heads. Oh, boy. Look at them. I did wipe my hands off, we're all good there. 
We're all nice and clean. Clean! But I am going to put a couple of these nasty ass water pump bolts in here. Fucking maybe. God dang, how much should I screw those in? Two twenty-eight, sixty, sixty, one fourteen. I don't know if that's gonna show up. There we go. There you go. All right, and I did find some actual assembly lube, so we can try to be legit, just like Hector. Hector's going legit. Ugh. Bah! Fucking bog it, dude. Get this shit all nice and gross and greasy. Good God! Right. Let me go in this way, so hopefully you guys can see. Come on. Oh, oh, that one got away from me a little bit, didn't it? We're getting it though. We're getting there. Somebody's having some fun. And there we go. I'm gonna get the front of the engine back together uh, and then I'm gonna start cleaning up a little bit because this feels really gross. And then we will start working on the heads. Cool? Cool. All right, got the front of the engine all back together so now we can start on the valve springs. And uh, this is a pretty simple setup, especially if you're doing it off the uh, engine. This is just like a $20 parts store compressor. Some people don't like it, but it's worked for me. There's one keeper. There's two keeper. And there's, there's the valve spring. And there's the ratchet. There's the retainer. So here's the stock spring, and here is the new spring. So, quite a bit of a height difference. Man, you can really see the difference in them right here. So right there's the stock valve springs, and right there's the new Pac-1219. Look at how much more space there is between the coils. That's gonna be nice. That. So I think I'm probably just gonna keep plugging away on these.
And just like that, we are done with both heads. The other one is over there. That's the one I started with. And that took a total of, I think, 15 minutes. Well, 16, but I dropped one of the keepers and had to find it. I did clean it off. Don't worry. We're all good there. So, heads are good. Cam is in. The only thing left to do is basically just order the, uh, the new head bolts. But I am going to copper spray the LS9 gaskets and reuse those. Uh, I think it'll work. If it doesn't, that's on me. I accept that. I'm probably just going to set the engine back together for now and probably just get a couple pictures for the thumbnail, but that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time. <laughs>